In this video, I'm going to be looking at radioactive decay. And you may have heard of radioactive decay. And it works kind of like this. There's some parent isotope, and this parent isotope will try to get to a more stable state, and it does this by decaying down to what is called a daughter isotope. So the parent decays down to a daughter, and really, if we wanted to look at this parent, if we kind of zoomed in here, imagine we have like this microscope or something, we can look at the individual atoms. I'm just going to put P for parent. So these are parent atoms. And it's a random process in terms of which exact atom will decay down. But if I look at these, these individual atoms are changing to individual atoms of this daughter product. And it's, it's random in the sense of I can't predict when a single one of these atoms will go down to a daughter atom. But I could say, I could watch the entire process over time and say, okay, well, after uh, this amount of time, I'm confident that a certain percentage of these parent atoms will go down to a daughter atom. And kind of as means, as an example, consider if we had popcorn. If you had popcorn kernels, it's kind of the same idea. And what, what do I mean by that? Um, well, so let's say we had all these popcorn kernels. And let's also say that you know after a certain amount of time, now you might not be able to predict when any one of these individual popcorn kernels will pop. But you might know, well, if I wait, let's say 30 minutes, well, not 30 minutes would be a long time to cook popcorn. Let's say two minutes. That makes a lot more sense. Two minutes then I know half of these will pop. And it could be any amount of popcorn, but you know after about two minutes that half of them will pop. Now you don't know, you can't pick individual ones, you don't know how to predict that, but you could come back and maybe this one popped into popcorn, maybe this one was still a kernel, maybe this one is popcorn now, maybe this one's popcorn now, and then these last two are still kernels. So you can maybe see the analogy here. In the same way with the parent, I might not be able to say when an individual atom will turn to a daughter atom, but over a period of time I can say, oh, 40% or 50% of these atoms are now daughter atoms, although I don't know which ones exactly. So here's an idea on how we can, we can represent this mathematically as well. So we're going to let n be the number of nuclei of the parent isotope nuclei, if I can spell. And then we're going to have some tiny amount of time, dt. And where I'm kind of going with this, I want to see how many of the parent nuclei I have at any given time. So dt is the tiny amount of time. Then dn will be a tiny amount that decay. How many of the parents that we're losing that are decaying into the daughter atoms. And we can represent this, so we can draw, we can make a proportionality. We could say that negative dn, and you say, why negative? Well, it's negative because those are the ones we're losing, the tiny amount that we're losing, so negative since we're losing them. That's proportional. How many we're losing is going to be proportional to how many we started with, this n, how many we have total, and how much time, dt. And it's only proportional, and you say, why is that? Well, it depends on what kind of, there's a lot of different radioactive elements, and so they're going to decay at a different rate. So one thing may not decay at the same rate as another element. And that's why we have to make this proportionality and equality, we have to add in the decay constant. And the decay constant is different for all the different kinds of radioactive elements. And so in that case, we can get this, it's lambda is the symbol, symbol and this is the decay constant. Let me write that over here. 
And again, that's that is for just whatever that element is. It's going to have a different decay constant. It takes that into account. Equals n dt. And now we want to solve for this for n that in terms of t. That way we can know how many of these parent nuclei we have at any given time. So I want to solve this. This is gonna we're gonna set up an integral here. So I can divide both sides by n, and I'd get dn over n, and then I'm also gonna multiply this negative over to make this side positive. Equals negative lambda dt. And I can integrate both sides as well, so I can do the integral here. And then since this negative lambda, lambda is a constant, so I don't need it inside the integral. I can do it like so. Now you may recall that this integral negative, or I'm sorry, the integral of dn over n, that integral equals that ln of n. And I'm also going to say we can tell that this is going to be dependent on t. That's why I have this n of t, because it's dependent on the time, t, equals negative lambda. Integral of dt is just t. And then also, since this was an indefinite integral, we have to have some constant of integration. Now, if I want to solve this for n of t, I can do the e to both sides, so e. And this implies that n of t equals, now I can rewrite this as e to the negative lambda t and times e to the constant. e to the negative lambda t e to the constant. That's the exact same, that's the exact same as this expression. And really, e to a constant, that itself is just a constant, and I'm just going to, just because, I'm just going to call that constant b. It doesn't really matter. Um, we'll solve for it here in a second. So, equals e to the constant. I'm just going to call, get another color. I'm just going to call this b. b, e to the negative lambda t. Whoops, I think I accidentally got a slightly different shade. Oh well. Now I can solve for b. And the way I can do that, I can look at what my starting amount of the parent isotope was. The starting amount would be at time equals zero. So I'll plug that in. So this implies n of zero equals b e to the negative lambda t, but t is zero, so really this whole thing's going to be zero. And anything to the zero is just one. So really this is b times one, so this just equals b. In other words, n of zero equals b. So we can plug that in for b in this equation. So this b is just n of zero. And then to write the whole equation, n of t equals n of zero e to the negative lambda t. And that's how you arrive at the equation for radioactive decay. Uh, I hope you learned something, and leave a comment if you have a question about anything. See you next time. Thanks.